What's up guys, welcome to Jew Whiskey, I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and every once in a while throw in other whiskey related content. Today I've got a list for you guys. We're gonna be going over five great whiskeys from unpopular distilleries. Should be fun, stick around. All right, five great whiskeys from kind of unpopular distilleries. Uh, I did a video recently where uh, I talked about a poll that I did on Patreon. On Patreon, I asked my patrons to vote for brands, whiskey brands that they don't really like, don't really buy too much from. That video did quite well, but it also got its fair share of backlash because there's a lot of people out there who genuinely enjoy those brands. So it is understandable. Some of those people got a little bit defensive. So for the record, a few things here. Number one, that was not a personal attack. I'm sure you have very good taste and I'm sure the people who work at those distilleries work very hard and care about what they're doing. Uh, number two, that was not even my opinion. That opinion was the amalgamation of 50 people voting on a Patreon poll. I asked my patrons a direct question and they voted and answered honestly. Uh, and number three, like what you like. It's just a video on YouTube. No one's telling you to dislike something. So with all that said, in today's video, I am going to try and put more of a positive spin on that video from a couple of weeks back, try and redeem myself a little because as a YouTuber, I'm constantly seeking validation through the approval of strangers on the internet. So I'll be listing off good bottles from some of the brands that were mentioned in that last video because I'm sure even my patrons would agree here. Sometimes brands that you don't really like or aren't really interested in still do pump out a banger from time to time. So five good bottles from unpopular distilleries. I'm not really going to factor in price in today's video. This will be in ascending order of deliciousness, all my opinion. Uh, now you might remember that in that previous video, I listed off 10 distilleries, but today I've only got five bottles for you. Um, I tried my best. As usual, I do have a mystery pour in the glass here. This one is an older whiskey. It's from one of the three distilleries that tied in 11th place in that last video. So that's your hint for today. So stick around after the list and I'll share with you what that is. And that's it for our intro. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into our list. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that would be greatly appreciated. Before we jump in, I do want to give an honorable mention, and that honorable mention is McAllen. McAllen was number three on that previous list. Uh, and to be honest, I like most of their whiskeys. Not so much the special edition, no age stated whiskeys. Those tend to disappoint for the price. And actually the issue in general with McAllen is that it does often disappoint for the price, but I still like their age stated core range. I think they're good whiskeys. It can be the double cask, it can be the sherry cask, the 12s, the 15s, the 18s. Those are all good whiskeys. The 18s are obviously well overpriced at this point. Don't recommend getting those. The 15 has shot up in recent years, so I don't really buy it anymore. I still do occasionally come back to the 12 year olds. Yeah, they're 40%, they're chill filtered, but they do taste good. And listen, in my patron's defense, the question I put forward was not what brands do you hate the flavor of? It was what brands do you avoid buying? So that could be for whatever reason. And I think a lot of them probably do enjoy the flavors of McAllen, but they don't like the branding, they don't like the marketing, and they don't like the price. And in that sense, McAllen makes absolute sense on that list, but I'm including them as an honorable mention here because despite the branding and the specs and the marketing, I'm still happy to drink their whiskey. I think it's good whiskey, so there we go. Honorable mention. At number five, kicking off our proper list, I've got a whiskey from Glenrothes. Now in that video a couple of weeks back, Glenrothes came in at number 10. So it's definitely not the most disliked brand on the list. I think for the most part, people are just kind of indifferent about it. Anyway, my pick from Glenrothes is the Maker's Cut. This one is no age stated sherried whiskey. Uh, it's not an epic whiskey. It's not gonna blow you away, but it is solid. It's rich, it's enjoyable. We get spices, we get fruit, we get chocolate. It's good. One thing of note about this one is that I believe it's discontinued and not just this one, pretty much the entirety of the old range. If you go to the website now, they only have whiskeys starting with the 18 year old and older. So they don't even have younger whiskeys anymore, which is interesting. Either way, the Maker's Cut is still around in my market and I imagine that it's still around in most markets because I'm pretty sure that rebrand happened only just recently. Although, to be honest, I'm not totally sure because I don't really follow the brand that much, which I guess is a little bit telling. Um, but no, not an epic whiskey, a really solid whiskey. It is worth checking out, and if it's still in your market and you want to grab it, it is worth trying. Glen Rothes Maker's Cut. At number four, we've got a good whiskey from Glen Fittick. Now, on that previous list, Glen Fittick came in at number seven. Uh, I actually never really had a problem with Glen Fittick. 
I actually like the house style. It's not a favorite, but I think it's good. And you know, despite the mass market specs, it is a whiskey that for me has always been just kind of reliable in a pinch. Uh, on the opposite end of that, it's never particularly impressive, but it's always around, it's available, and it's affordable. Anyway, I did try a Glenfiddich recently that I thought was really good. It was an 18 year old, but it wasn't the standard 18 year old. This one was from the Perpetual Collection. It was vat number four and it was nice. This one is travel retail. It's Solera aged 47.8%. It is a big step up from the standard 18 year old. We do have uh, classic Glenfiddich flavor flavors in here, but they are amped up a little bit. It's rich, it's fruity, good complexity. I enjoyed it. Also, side note, another good Glenfiddich you can check out is the 15 year old, uh, I believe it's called Distillery Edition. That one had a higher ABV. I believe it was over 50%. Obviously, nice age statement there. Now, I think that one's been discontinued, so I'm not sure if you'll still be able to find it, uh, but if you can, check it out. Meanwhile, for what's currently available, check out the Perpetual Vat Number no. 4, 18 year old. It's a good one. Next up at number three, we've got a bottle from Tom and Towel. Now this brand was number eight on the unpopular list. And I realized after I shot that video that there had been a whiskey that I tried from them a long time prior that I thoroughly enjoyed. And that bottle is the 14 year old. I'm pretty sure it had been at least 10 years since I tried it. So as soon as I shot that video, I got kind of curious. I went out, I got a bottle, I popped it and it's still pretty good. It's a classic Highland profile with quite a punch of spice. It is a little bit more rugged, a little bit less engineered than a lot of its contemporaries, but I kind of appreciate that. So it's got kind of an old school appeal. It's fully craft, so 46% non-chill filtered natural color. It is a classic Highlander, but just with some rougher edges, but I think it works. I think it's a really good whiskey and I think it's overlooked. So it is one to check out, Tom and Tal 14. At number two, we've got a whiskey that I have talked about previously on the channel. I've talked about it quite a bit, actually. It's from Dalmore. Now, Dalmore was the number two least liked brand on that entire list. Uh, this one is the Sherry Cask Select 12 year old. This one is different than the standard 12 year old and much better. So don't judge it on that basis. It is rich. It is full. It is fruity. It's probably one of the richer 12 year old Sherry whiskeys you're going to find out there. Uh, I think our cask play here was excellent. And usually I'm a guy that's sensitive to a very strong cask influence, but this one makes it work. So I think this is a really solid bottle. I think there are a couple other really solid Dalmores out there. I don't have an issue with this brand like a lot of other people do, but certainly the colors are ridiculous. The older bottles are too expensive. I, I understand the complaints, but still, I like Dalmore and I like this one. Okay, coming in at number one, we have a Bowmore bottle. Now, Bowmore was number six on that list. Like Dalmore, I don't have as much of a problem with them as a lot of people out there do. That said, they definitely have their issues and there is room for improvement. I think most of their core range is kind of lackluster, but I genuinely like their 18 year old. 43% uh, colored, chill filtered. It doesn't matter. It's got great flavors. If you're a fan of peat and sherry together, I think this is one of the best options out there. For me, this is most certainly the best thing from their core range. Uh, in my market, it's not ridiculously overpriced for it being an 18 year old. So it's an interesting one. I think it gets overlooked just because the brand doesn't have the best reputation, but this is a good one. It's worth checking out, Bowmore more 18. Okay, that was the list guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, I wanna hear from you. So what are some great bottles from brands that you consider to be unpopular? Now those don't need to be brands that I listed on that previous video. They could just be brands that in general don't get a lot of love, but are still putting out good whiskeys once in a while. I'm looking forward to reading what you guys drop in the comments from that. Uh, finally, if you stuck around to find out what my mystery pour is here, the hint was that this is a pour from one of the three brands that tied for 11th place in that video. What I'm drinking is, Glen Murray 18. Now Glen Murray didn't crack the top 10 for disliked brands on that list and I think there's a reason for that. Uh, yeah, it's not a great brand, but they do offer up some very affordable options. And this 18 year old is one of them. This is a very cheap 18 year old. Is it the best 18 year old out there? No, but it is pretty solid. It's definitely one of the cheapest. It's 46%. It makes for a great sipper. Not every whiskey needs to rock your world. If you're looking for an easy sipping, affordable 18 year old, this is a great option. 
And that brings us to the end of today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, I've got both Patreon and PayPal listed down below if you want to help out with the channel. I'm um, looking forward to reading your comments. What are some great whiskeys from unpopular distilleries? And I suppose we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.